So to get started today, let's just talk about stress, first of all. So we know that our anxiety is really coming from stress in some way. And stress is defined as our body's way of responding to challenges. And also it's generally perceived to be as negative, but in the real context, it's only negative when we take it negatively, if that makes sense. It's a state of mind and it can be affected by outside forces, which in effect can influence us both physically and mentally. There are many indications of stress overload, and so to highlight some, let's just get right to it. So we know that stress is reflected as part of our daily lives. It's common for us to feel stress when something bad happens to us or when we are given challenges that we just feel like we can't handle. So to name a few, we have uh, debt, we're in the wrong career, we have a low income. I need to also say that even a high income and not being able to handle things in your life uh, can be a problem. But a lot of times people feel that bills or high tuition fees and things that are more financial can be a problem. So what are the most common signs and symptoms of stress that you should not ignore? And really, uh, definitely don't ignore them if you want to live a happier and more peaceful life. So they are excessive anxiousness. So listen, so I said your anxiety comes from stress and one of the symptoms is anxiousness, right? So the anxiousness that I'm talking about is what you're feeling. So it's the physical signs. It includes the irritability, the poor sleeping habits, um, shortness of breath, trembling, dizziness, palpitations, uh, muscle tension, even just having aches and pains, and even slower mental functioning. And that occurs because the neurotransmitters, a chemical found in the brain, is decreased actually when we're really stressed. And anxiety can be reduced by taking antidepressants in order to supply the brain with that chemical de deficit. But also what we can do is focus on breathing, controlling our anxiety responses, yoga, qigong, like there are so many different awesome ways to deal with anxiety. And if you need to go on medication, you have to go on medication, but there are other options often for you. So another uh, area that can give us anxiety is prolonged depression. So stress can possibly lead to depression, which can cause restlessness and tremendous weight loss or weight gain, um, sadness, fatigue, irritability, even poor sex drive. And people tend to um, get so depressed at times that they might even feel suicidal. So in order to do with that, you definitely need to um, work with somebody one-on-one -on -one and you might want to also look at um, meditation because meditation especially combined with medication, can alleviate depression, but lifestyle change can definitely alleviate most depression. And also alcoholism and addiction. A lot of times when people are in stress overload with anxiety, they want to look for something different, whether it is alcohol or food or any other addiction. So for most of us, stress seems to be a part of our daily life, right? We think that we have these stressors and we, you know, just take it all in. And in order for us to manage stress, we need to first identify the actual things that are causing us stress. Now, we already know that I named some areas that you should think about working on. So your diet and your sleep and so forth. So we will get into all of that in this kit. But I need you to know yourself. So you need to understand how you normally react to stress if you want to be able to cope with it. And it's important for you to understand that the way that you act in response to stress as it could help you to know your limits as well and your strengths in surviving difficult challenges as well. So we need to change what happens in our daily lives that can cause a stress in a certain level. So there's good and pleasurable things that can also cause a stress like sports, vacations, recreational activities. However, we can expect that difficult situations like an office meeting or a romantic relationship breaking up or anything like that can really cause us to feel tremendous amounts of stress. And we normally respond to stress and anxiety in a very patterned way. So the first stage is that we recognize that we're stressed and we know how it affects us at a certain level. The next stage is that we become more aware of these manifestations of stress and we respond to it in the way that we recognize it. So knowing how we respond to any stress is going to help us to overcome the stress. Now, 
while we have our response to stress and we know it's a pattern, our approach towards managing stress might really vary. So if we know that we always get heart palpitations when we get stressed or we always get a headache, that's our pattern. But how we manage it might be different. So you might learn that uh, meditation really works for you or that yoga really works for you or that a combination of meditation, yoga, and bicycling really work for you. There also has to be emotional activities to combat our stress like meditation. So let's let's look at some of the cognitive symptoms of stress. So this is the, the mind stuff. This is what a lot of people will say to me, I'm really nervous, I'm forgetting a lot, you know, I think I'm having some kind of a breakdown. So for most of us, because the nature of our work, maybe, stress becomes a part of our lifestyle. We've started to accept it. And we have to understand that stress is not always a bad thing. I keep saying that. So it's the level of positivity or negativity. And it depends on how we perceive it. So what do you mean by that? Um, when, when I say that we perceive stress in a certain way, so if I see that it's raining outside and I'm really upset by it and I allow that to bother me, then I'm going to have more stress. If I look outside and I'm a little bit bummed out and I say, well, you know what, the plants, the grass, the trees, they need water, the animals need water, then I don't feel as bad. But if I can look outside and go, wow, that's so beautiful, it's raining and it's nourishing the earth, then I'm changing a perception and how I handle things. So it's the same external, but the internal is very different. So how you manage stress can be a motivation if you need to look at, you know, am I really handling stress the way I, I, I need to? So we know that when we're stressed too often, our mind and body will really be affected and we will protect ourselves from these effects. And we need to do that. And we need to learn to recognize the signs of stress at its early stages so that we can easily manage it. So let's understand first how our body responds to stress. When our body recognizes a threat, our nervous system instinctively releases stress hormones containing adrenaline and cortisol, and they are responsible for stimulating the body to prepare for an emergency. So I personally know that when I get really stressed and I feel that adrenaline, my heart is beating a little faster, I might feel edgy or irritable, and if I have that over time or if I'm upset over time, my cortisol level goes up. And what happens with that is that I could gain weight, I could lose weight, I could age quicker. There's so many different things that happen with cortisol that it's really quite dangerous. So you want to make sure that you keep the adrenaline low and the cortisol low. So when people say that they're, you know, um, high risk junkies or, you know, drama junkies or whatever it is, when people like to take risks and they like adrenaline, they are becoming addicted to that adrenaline and their cortisol level is probably higher and that's really not healthy. So again, normal manifestations are a faster heartbeat, increase of blood pressure, shorter and faster breath, which by the way, will actually make you more anxious, muscle tension, and the body senses become sharper because our body is preparing us to fight against a harmful threat. However, when we hit a certain level, the stress stops becoming useful. We're not running away from a dinosaur anymore, right? So instead, it starts to direct be a direct uh, threat to our health. And the feelings and the mindset which accompany it will affect our productivity, our relationships, and our entire well-being. So... The reason why I asked you before to focus on sleep is because we need sleep to help us to heal. So we know that stress has cognitive symptoms, and when you're stressed, you're likely to notice that you have problems with sleeping, or you're disorganized, or you have rushing thoughts or memory problems. You might be a worry wart, or you might be having difficulty in just making really simple decisions. So when we're under stress, our brain, our brain excuse me, definitely functions differently. And there are people that notice that when they're stressed or experiencing a bad situation, that they might feel like they're functioning more clearly and thoughts come in and their brain is hyperactive and, and they feel really good. So 
while it could be beneficial at times when you need it, um, when you have to think on your feet and you're maybe in front of a crowd and your heart is beating a little faster, if it happens every day or if it's happening too often, your brain can't return to the normal state and function after being high and hyperactive for so long. So if you're stressed and you're in this high hyperactive state, that kind of can stay with you. So if you think of a stressed child who is told that they have ADHD, they might just be stressed. It might not be that they're actually high and hyperactive. It might just be that they're stressed. And that actually does cause the brain to deteriorate a little bit, which is why too much stress is very damaging. So what about the physical signs and symptoms of stress? Women especially, um, we definitely have more of a fight or flight response in our body that we notice more. Men have it too, but women notice it a little bit more because we're not comfortable with that chronic stress feeling and we hold so much in. We think that we're so expressive and that we let everything out and we vent, but we're not really problem solving sometimes with it. And so when we have these symptoms, they can't be ignored because they can lead to really serious problems. And so when you notice that your heart's pounding and you don't really focus on it and you know you're not having a heart attack, you might just be under stress, but here's the thing. You keep having that symptom and sooner or later, it might be a heart attack. So our mind and body are designed to cope with that fight or flight response of our nervous system, which is characterized by speeding up of these body functions. And it's important that we recognize that stress when it reaches a harmful level, because when we recognize when it reaches a harmful level, we can take action and we need to help regain our body and regain that control. And there's going to be times where we can't recognize stress-related symptoms because that physical reaction isn't familiar. Um, you know, we might be really angry or we might be crying or we might be very familiar with the physical sign and symptoms such as, you know, the, again, the heart palpitation or a headache. So here are just some of the physical symptoms that go with having a stress overload and anxiety. Shortness of breath, increased heart rate, dizziness, fatigue, constipation or diarrhea, or both. Indigestion, hyperventilating, upset stomach, headaches, excessive sweating, increased colds or flu, and a dry mouth. So what do we do? Well, we can address this by applying some coping techniques. And I know when I say these, you're going to say, oh, I tried it once or twice, it didn't work. Or I tried it for a while and it didn't work. You know what? Try it again. Cardio exercise, yoga, swimming, whatever your preference is, make sure that you give proper attention to coping with stress overload so that you can stay healthy and happy. So what if you wake up one day and you feel sick, unmotivated, and really unhappy? Well, number one, you need to probably connect with a therapist and or um, a medical doctor. But if you're in a situation where you're in self-help and you want to work with a coach or you want to do it yourself, you need to recognize and regulate your stress levels. So when we can say that our stress level is too high, here are 10 warning signs that you should take proper consideration. So I want you to think about these. You experience sudden anger, that's number one. That's like where you're lashing out at people, you're irritable. Number two, you feel beaten down, even with small things you do, like you just feel like you're just burdened. Number three, you seem to be worrying and you don't really see the reason. You, you know that you're a worry wart or you know that people are saying that you're a worrier. Number four, you're feeling depressed and unmotivated to work or you just don't feel like doing things. Number five, you get exhausted and despite being tired, you find it hard to fall asleep because your mind's still reeling. Number six, you're suffering from constant colds and even when you know that somebody's having a cold, you just know that you are going to catch it or you have it and it just seems that your recovery is slower than usual. Number seven, you find it hard to concentrate and you feel like your memory's fading and you might even forget things that you were doing just a few minutes ago. Number eight, 
you're having mood swings. You might go from happy to sad, and you might even be uh, bursting out with tears for no reason. Number nine, you actually start to care less about yourself, your relationship, your, your environment, and it doesn't matter anymore if you don't brush your hair or say I love you to your partner like you used to. And lastly, you always seem to be lacking in time, like some evil demon took half of your day. So effects of chronic stress on the brain, um, this is a biggie because it's really, um, it's really big, okay? So the hippocampus is one of the components of our brain that is responsible for consolidating long and short-term memory and spatial navigation. So chronic stress can really reduce all of that, leading to a destruction of neurons, short-term memory reduction, and also a loss and weak um, endocrine response to chronic stress. So what we need to do is we need to really allocate at least 20 minutes of meditation or peacefulness and relaxation a day. Yoga is great because it combines some of that meditation and quietness along with that physical activity, and it's really a good combination for you to really start addressing your stress. And I've been through stress. I've had anxiety. It stinks. It sucks. It's horrible. I've had a 180 heart rate. That was a resting heart rate. So I know what it's like. I've been really stressed before. I've had anxiety before. And I'm here to tell you, as a survivor of anxiety, you can really address it. So if you are someone who is more linked with stressors where you have chronic muscle strain or headaches and so forth, you're going to also be someone who might get dizziness and skin issues and blood pressure issues. So you can even get rashes. So I want you to also understand that this can also gravitate into your relationships because tension is tough. So there's so many times where we go, oh my gosh, I'm stressed out. And so, yeah, we're stressed out, but however we might have trouble working out what's causing it. So you and your mate, your partner, your husband, your wife, you might be able to deal with the tension of the day to day, but underlying all of that, what's causing it is still there. And so what happens is there's more and more tensions. And you start to blame your partner and all of your physical and emotional reactions that I just went through, you actually think are really your partner and they're really not. So a lot of times you think that, um, you know, work tension is staying at, at work, but really research has demonstrated over and over that the tension you have at work or the workaholic person is bringing that home and they're bringing that unhappiness into their marriage or their partnership and especially workaholics because they're staying connected through phone and email and technology and your partner might really start to feel lonely and then your partner is going to start interacting with other people or whatever and you are going to then turn around and say why are you doing that so Another thing that happens with parents is that you feel like you have to keep up on everybody's schedule all of the time. And scheduling, you know, your children and taking them back and forth to ballet or soccer or whatever, um, and the family gets burnt out because everybody is becoming stressed. And you really have to take a look at if your daughter has a stomach ache every time it's ballet night and your son is getting headaches all the time and having outbursts and he doesn't want to go to baseball or soccer and you and your husband aren't connecting um, and all of these things are starting to pile up, that means your family is going through some chronic stress and anxiety. So I would love for you to focus on relaxation and decluttering your life and your mind and really becoming connected to your truth. And less stress is is a key to better health. So if you have anything, an infection, diabetes, um, just chronic colds, lowering your stress level is only going to help your health. That's what it's going to do. It's really going to help you and it's going to help your relationships and it's even going to help you as far as um, even your work environment because the less stressed you are, the more clear you can be with your, your you can decrease your anxiety so much. So if it's your desire to live a life that is full of joy, wouldn't it be nice if you really felt that you valued yourself? And wouldn't it be nice if you could manage your stress more effectively? 
So really think about what I just talked about and look at some of the other courses and options that we have here. And I want you to start thinking about, you know, getting over being loaded on stress and anxiety and know that it's possible to manage your stress and that the key is paying attention to your body signs and symptoms and to intervene them in the early stages of anxiety and of stress, and you really can live a much, much more calmer life.